And hello, hello. Hello, hi, hi everybody. <laughs> hello and welcome. <laughs> hi, uh, welcome to another episode of Let's Keep Chatting. We're on episode two now. Um, my name's Lisa and I have Elbrick with me along today. We're from the Five Centre of Equalities. And today, uh, <laughs> and today we have Karen from Collodine Community Centre. Um, first, I would just like to say, let's keep chatting. Podcast where we're chatting to community groups or organisations around Fife. And we want to see how they're helping different equality groups and how they're dealing and how they're dealing with the effects of poverty you know within the area that that they are helping and also to see how they're uh, helping with the current COVID-19 situation as well so hi Cara hi uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I would say is that the, the podcast will be on your you, but it's also, oh. also going to be on YouTube. So if anyone oh. needs to have subtitles, we'll be able to see Great. it on YouTube as well. So yeah, that's very important. Sorry, I just jumped in there. But there you go. Fantastic. <laughs> so Karen, uh, can you tell us a bit about uh, Claudine Community Centre, please? And what you have been doing? Yes, yes. Uh, College and Community Centre has been, you know, at the heart of College and North Glenothes for, you know, quite a lot of years. Centre manager Rose Duncan took over the running of the centre about a year and a half ago. And since she's taken over, um, we have had a huge sort of uptake in Pre-COVID, we had a huge uptake in uh, different events, activities, everything from senior groups to carers groups to Andy's Man Club, Women's Wellbeing Club, children's groups, toddler groups, youth club, dog walking, you name it. We, we did it, you know, really very, very busy centre pre-COVID. Um, since COVID hit, we, we are trying to adapt and, you know, still be, leave a light on for the community, but, you know, adapt things in order to serve the people in a way that, that we can at the moment, that's required. So, yeah, it's, it's all happening. <laughs> that's been pretty, pretty tough. So, what, just to give a sense, uh, what what would be if it is such a like a normal day at the center before COVID? What it was like, and yeah. what's like a normal day now? I know I know it's not normal now. Yeah. What's like every day now? Kind of. Yeah, thing, it's a huge way. it's a huge contrast for our roles. Um, pre COVID, um, we would it would involve you know interaction with the various groups. Um, you know, a lot of sort of office-based admin work um, and, you know, just day-to-day -day operations, you know, trying to keep the place running and, you know, keeping all our groups, our service users happy. Mm -hmm. um, lots of people coming and going. Um, very, you know, busy operation. But however, um, since since the, the onset of COVID, um, our roles have all changed dr drastically and the staff that are here have just, you know, we all decided at the start that we wanted to continue to provide a service for people that needed it and we wanted to um, still continue to work and be here for the community, which oh, there was a, a huge need for for us to be here uh, and do what what we could to help. So, who who is your like? Uh, who's your target group? Is it the catchment catchment area that you work with? Is it like with? with um, yeah. oh, so, so, what what's your your, your main focus? Is it around Corridian area or what? what it's called in North Glenothes, so okay. you know, North Glenothes is is as um, you know as important as Collie Dean, but predominantly because we're geographically in 
polyene. You know, there, there's, you know, there's a lot more sort of interaction with people in polyene. But we are, we do want to try and expand that, you know, and find different ways of delivering um, help and support to people in the community. Uh, so with that in mind, we we have introduced community champions who are people that are based in the community and, um, you know, who have been doing, let's face it, amazing, unpaid and unrecognised work through the whole of the COVID crisis. Um, and we've approached these people who know their own communities best and we've said to them, you know, what can we do to help you and support you to continue to help your communities? And so we're working on that at the moment. Mm -hmm. So we've got kind of three groups. We've got young families and people on sort of really insecure jobs and things like that. We've got um, elderly and vulnerable people. And we've got young, homeless, transient people in, the, in, this, in, that, in our communities. And, you know, so with with community champions in mind, they know who needs support and how, what type of support. And I think it's important to, you know, ask people what they want rather than, you know, tell them what they need. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're looking at different ways of delivering help and support to them through the community champions. That's just one of the things that we've been doing. Um, And has it helped community champions, you know, to get out there and speak to all the different groups that you are helping, you know, because some people might feel that they don't want to talk about their situation? Yes, absolutely. Um, the, you know, pre-COVID, the, there was a, a DWP um, statistic of um, poverty in call, child poverty in Collydean, 38.8%. That was in 2016. So I can only imagine, you know, <laughs> it's quite fair, a fair assumption that it would be quite a bit higher than that at the moment. So, you know, we really need to... So we've always had, um, pre-COVID, we had a community larder, which was that we would source food from um, supermarkets, fair share, neighbourly, that kind of thing. And we would offer that food to the community um, to prevent it from going into landfill predominantly, you know, um, but also, you know, that, that became quite a lifeline for a lot of people. Uh, who are experiencing hardship, but since since COVID, that's become even more valuable. You know, like every day, every other day, we, we try to put stuff out into the community and the community champions are delivering that on our behalf to places that we can reach and to people that we can't, you know, we can't get access to. So, you know, we're, we're just, continuing on as we did before, but just delivering it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. That so good. So, um, what kind of, like, how do you think about the mental health? Do you feel the mental health of people at this precise moment? And probably, you know, just learning about COVID-19 before we went into proper lockdown, kind of thing. Do you feel it's affected the area that you're in um, quite a lot? Or do you feel, you know, do you feel that um, people are willing to, like, ask for help to get, you know, so that you can say maybe, if you're not able to help them, refer them on to other groups, you know? Yeah. Um, well, to go back to the beginning of the COVID crisis, Right from the beginning, um, Rosa Centre Manager um, decided that we needed to repurpose the centre um, and we needed to continue to, we needed to sort of, um, one of the sort of first things we did was we created a little mini call centre and we um, we had like staff like myself, my colleague Lauren and volunteers 
um, you know, who did invaluable work and we sort of mapped where the, the, the need was, you know, people that were shielding, people with mental health problems. And we also, um, you know, coordinated people that were willing to help in the community, businesses that were willing to help, other third sector organisations and local authority, you know, how what help was available. And we brought that all together. Um, it was a huge undertaking. Um, and, you know, just to sort of actually meet the demand, but mental health, there was a, there was and is a huge issue with mental health. Um, you know, as, as the COVID, when the COVID crisis first hit, um, you know, as it progressed, we got more and more referrals for people with mental health issues. Right from the beginning, we um, had introduced a befriending service um, mm -hmm. for people. Um, to just, you know, there's some people who during the COVID crisis, they wouldn't see people for weeks. And, you know, they just, just to hear a human voice and somebody to contact and somebody to talk to. And so we sort of matched, uh, my colleague Lauren, she matched up um, all the people that, that required that service with volunteers that were happy to be befrienders. Mm -hmm. um, that's been quite successful. We worked in partnership with British Red Cross, uh, the Rotary Club of Glenrothes to deliver, you know, those services. They, they worked in partnership with us. Um, Organisations like that have been invaluable. Um, we worked with the, the midwives and, you know, health services throughout the the area as well. So that's something we, we are really interested in. Obviously, we, we as Center for Equalities, we're really interested in, in uh, the equality groups and the protected characteristics and the impact that uh, w what's been going on has had on the group. So uh, on our side, we know a bit that there's been, let's say, minority older people that uh, that have been left out of the loop quite a lot, or people with, from yeah. uh, learning disability as well. So. Yes. Uh, is there any any groups from uh, from a particular characteristics that you, you you you've noticed that actually we needed that extra help? Yes, uh, we yeah we we ran ESOL classes prior to the COVID mm -hmm. thing. Um, we we have actually as well um, delivered digital connectivity. We provided um, digital equipment, laptops, Kindles, tablets. Um, you know to assist people from different ethnic backgrounds to stay in touch with their families and friends. Um, predominantly that was introduced um, by the centre manager um, to help elderly and vulnerable people stay connected. So mm -hmm. what we did was we provided um, Kindles, tablets, MP3 players, mobile phones. Um, it was for, um, you know, Originally, the thought was for people that were elderly and vulnerable, but also people from the different ethnic backgrounds, um, people that have just been released from prison, um, young offenders, that type of thing, um, single parents, um, you know, and we would, uh, for in the case of like elderly and vulnerable people, we would go out to um, the house, we would work in partnership with a local small business mm -hmm. um, who would go, who would set up all the equipment and actually go out with full PP and deliver it and teach them how to use it. So that's, that's been really as well. well. So not, yes, not just getting the kit and then go like, oh, what are they doing? Yes. <laughs> uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh -huh. um, we have um, Syrian refugees, we have a Latvian family that are, you know, that use the centre. Prior to um, COVID, I was running uh, um, World's Cooking Workshops. So we would have, um, it was actually at one of your events that I um, had met um, a gentleman from India who agreed to come along and do a world cooking event for us. Ah. So um, <laughs> it was actually your um, award. I can't remember which award it was, but it was a while ago. I need to offer to come along and help with that. So um, that those were hugely popular with families and um, 
It's important to have a group yeah. there. And time single time. people <laughs> and people <laughs> from all walks of life, bringing them all together, teaching them how to cook, learning about different cultures, you know. And going forward, we would like to continue to deliver that. You know, we would like to, whether we do it on a digital platform, we also do like digital youth club and family fun learning for children, you know. Um, so we'd like to continue to, we did pizza workshops, our youth leader um, did. On, on yes, uh -huh, <laughs> we did pizza week and workshops. And so we, you know, we want to try and keep up with as many of the activities as possible, but do it in a sort of hybrid fashion, uh -huh. you know, where we can deliver things online and, you know, I mean, going forward, we'd like to bring people in at the centre, but might not always be possible. So we might have to, you know, do some in the centre, some online, you know. I, I can imagine yeah. ton, tons of parents that have been doing homeschooling would, would be like, oh, please do some digital online work. <laughs> we, we've, got, we've got a fab fabulous youth workers um, who have been delivering some amazing things. Uh, as I said, we did pizza workshops, uh, falconry. Um, we're I think we need to do this, Elric. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to think what else. Sorry, Amory. <laughs> Other things we've delivered online. I'm trying to think. There's so many. I just cut off the top of my. That's great, eh? <laughs> yoga and health and well-being ses sessions we've been delivering um we've been trying to offer things like growing together which is growing fruit and vegetables so mm. we sent people out like you know these little um uh greenhouses and grow oh, yes, bags and know. tomatoes and sunflower seeds we did that and that was really successful and popular and we did um fit things at the local um, Galvin Park, which was socially distanced, provide people with equipment so that they could do, take part in these activities. I think I've seen quite a few of the stuff about Galvin Bank. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, once you start talking, it's hard to stop me. There's so many things. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> What, what would be really good to do as well is, uh, I remember you had a poster of all the stuff you were doing. I think I had one from if you, if you month back and one from last year. So if you do have that, I share it with a, uh, with a post as well. Uh, of course. Uh, where you can point where, where things are taking place online. Absolutely. So, so, yeah. uh, so if, if you're from West Five or East Five, you can still join, surely. It's online. You can still pop in, or is that not? I'm just asking, I'm being cheeky. Well, you know, <laughs> anything's possible. It's, it's figuring out different ways to deliver it. You know, I, I, okay. you know, we'd need to look into that. But, you know, I mean, obviously, we want to we want to reach out to as many people as possible. We did a, a bike loan scheme with um, Silverburn Park, I think it was, where we lent out some bikes, you know, to help people keep fit and... You know, so we have a partnership with the local pharmacy, Chasm Pharmacy, and we've been, um, you know, so again, it's it's another way of sort of adapting the community champion idea because they, when they go out to deliver prescriptions, they can identify people that are maybe, you know, experiencing some hardship or maybe require a befriender. And we've been, we've been given out, um, you know, food parcels with the pharmacy and the fire... Uh, the local fire um, department have been helping to deliver them fortnightly, so that's been really successful as well. So, mm -hmm. the, yeah. as well, hibernation uh, has been one thing that we've heard quite a lot at, at the Centre for Crisis. People that they used to attend services, day services, or and basically that, that's gone. So, uh, having that human contact or someone coming around, maybe with us and having a chat, yeah, uh, seems to be really mega important. But yeah. At the start, it was not really there, but things have picked up since, and it's becoming a bit more uh, yeah. Right now. Yeah, I think a lot of people were also asking. I think they do hope that it continues over the winter months as well, because it's going to be even more yeah uh, stressful. Yeah. yeah, and I do want to stress that we couldn't do anything without our amazing, amazing volunteers and our you know staff at the centre here. We couldn't do anything without them. Um, you know, so. 
it's it's all thanks to them for you know really going up over and above um you know there's nothing else i could say about that really <laughs> So it, it's really good that you've been able to get all these activities and things like falconry and you know pizza and all that stuff you know yeah, to yeah. online with the you know and I'm impressed. <laughs> the whole community is getting involved you know and yeah. that, that's really good yeah it shows you the community spirit all behind it and backing the group as well. absolutely on, on a bit more of a depressing note though we have to from the centre since the start of lockdown, you know, approximately 13, 1300 emergency food parcels from, and that's just emergency food parcels. That doesn't include referral to food banks. That's just emergency food. So, you know, as soon as. big issues here. You know? <laughs> but is that, uh, just a, are you noticing a, a pattern? Is it uh, specifically older people? You see that some of the people that you were working with, they were in precarious employment, or the people that have yeah. got uh, low access to funds and uh, mm -hmm. they are living in poverty. It's not even at risk, they are living in poverty. So is there something that you're noticing or is it just distributed? Or? I would say um, the problems that we had at the start of COVID, the poverty and, you know, the mental health and everything's just been amplified. All those inequalities have been amplified by COVID. And, you know, um, we, we can, you know, we, we can help as much within our limited um, capacity. At the moment as well, we are working half of the centre as a building site because we are undertaking a series of capital works um, to improve the centre and make it more accessible for wheelchair users, disabled people to access the centre. Mm -hmm. So um, we are working from one hall at the back of the centre. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's 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 not the easiest situation, but we, we are continuing to do what we can to support Holly Dean and the office because we have a, we have the need for it. We do. We... So do you put the food parcels in, in that space or do you work with a, uh, yeah. an external food bank and you assemble bits or so? How, we how it work, we work with Glen Office Food Bank who do amazing work, I should say. Mm -hmm. And um, the, um, we do referrals for Glen Office Food Bank. However, when they are not open, they only they rely on volunteers. Um, so you know they can't be opened as much. Oh, they, right. You know, so when they are not open, and if somebody has an emergency, you know, requirement, then we will provide emergency food packages for them. Um, you know, but there's so much more that that could be done. That you know. Um, we, if we were not in a building site at the moment, but you know, um, it, it's very difficult at times. And is it for a long time, or is it like a, a temporary thing? Is that is it is it likely to finish quite soon, or is it like a big, big building kind of we project going on? Um, well, it's been impacted obviously by COVID because building supplies, etc., have been very difficult to source. Some small companies have gone under. So right. it's, it, it, you know, I think it's it's running a, a bit, you know, it's taken a bit longer than we would have liked. Um, but it's it's what it is. Everybody's experiencing the same problems that's getting any kind of work done. It's just mm -hmm. yeah. what it is. You know, we yeah, just, you just have to sell people. people. On. Keep going, carry on regardless. <laughs> so, uh, what about your staff? Have you been some people working from home? Are you are you in pods? So, some 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 community yeah. groups uh, they, they separated out so that they can work in. Yes. In uh, so, it's, how is it going for you? It's a big space that we work in, um, but you know we have we we don't have too many people in at the same time. Obviously, we we can't we observe you know, social okay. distancing, yeah. all the measures that, that we have to by law. Um, but yes, it, it can be, it can be tricky, you know, because, you know, we we, we want people to be in the centre, it's a community centre, that's what we do. And um, But we, we make it work as best we can, 
you know, uh, mm-hmm. for the moment. <laughs> Hopefully, the future changes. <laughs> Not an easy. I'm situation. really hoping so. <laughs> I'm hoping it. All- <laughs> I'm sure it'll be marvellous when it all comes together. It just, you know, all good things take time, don't they? <laughs> That's that. Yeah. So, but in some ways it has forced you to work in in very different ways as well. But it, Yes. But, but you, as you say, it's like the groups of people that you're working with, that they were already de- struggling before. Now it's really come to light. It's really, really, really yeah. harsh. And, uh, and uh, that's also what, what we picked up from you know, like yeah. getting in touch with us and and so the groups so that we've interviewed on, on this as well and but yeah. some of them had to um, link up with groups that they weren't working together in order to reach specific groups so uh, some in some ways it's, it's changed how we work yeah. everyone as well so that's in some ways that can be good because we uh, we're doing things but the pressure is definitely there to actually yeah for sure link. I mean. I don't think, I think, you know, this is the new normal and we need to adapt to, you know, learn how to deliver things to adapt to this new reality, really. Um, how we do that going forward, mm. nobody knows. It's, there's so much uncertainty. But, you know, we, we just have to keep, you know, doing what we do and being a strong presence in our community and, um, you know, providing what we can it's all we can do mm-hmm. so- as a community group your spirits are you know up there you know to be able to adapt yeah yeah i mean we we, we get um you know, sometimes things are really busy and, you know, it's peaks and troughs and what have you, you know. And as staff members as well, we, we, we you know, we, we're, all, we're very aware that a lot of people do live quite a precarious existence. Um, we did the um, Poverty Alliance's Challenge Poverty. Um, we did a sponsored event, I actually did it myself, which was living on a food package, um, living on a pound a day for three days. So I did it in a few, uh, one of our community champions and a volunteer also did it and, you know, today's funds for the centre. And, you know, I think it's worth doing something like that every now and then, you know, if you're in a comfortable position, just to, you know, have a little insight, you know, and that was me. I found it really difficult. Three days living on a pound a day, and you know, you had to make a choice between, you know, one or two things that you could eat, and you know, and some people live like that day in day out, and you know, constant grind and poverty, and it's, you know, it's little wonder to me that there's a lot of issues that arise from that. You know, the- so- it's not easy to lift yourself off if everything is a struggle at the very single and that's if i remember that's the one that that's not even counting things like fuel or uh, eating or anything else with the transport it's just literally yeah. just dragging yeah uh-huh i mean it's on our facebook page, page i posted up like um just some of my thoughts on the whole thing <laughs> and, okay. and uh-huh. one of our volunteers did a, a video um you know video diary so it's worth checking it out and so we, we can share that as well as part of this post we'll, that. Make, we'll make sure to add it yeah so um we were, we're always like to try something new we're doing a pumpkin competition as i said we've got the pumpkin <laughs> <laughs> and we're doing a spooky mask competition we're always trying to do things to kind of go with the seasons and keep the children and families I, I, went, <laughs> I went on your website, it says there's no more pumpkins left. So are there still going to be some pumpkins next week? There are still, there are, we got more pumpkins from our friends at Morrison's this morning. So um, that was really good. Um, there will be pumpkins. There are okay. pumpkins. <laughs> so we important. are going out the door quite quickly. But, <laughs> <laughs> so. This is important, this one. <laughs> it's something that we, we talk about, it's like the... 
it's really tough everywhere, but we need to find little things that are really quite good and just lift everyone, just positive uh, things. And uh, we, we, we seem to talk a lot about food, actually, as, as, a, as something that yeah. we do, and maybe it's just being at home and, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, cooking with someone else or sharing a meal uh, or something yeah. like that. It, it, positive things that we can do. Yeah. Uh, really important. So the pumpkin swing is brilliant. I, mean, I, I can notice a pumpkin in your background as well. That's just... <laughs> this is made by our caretaker, Alan. He did a brilliant job. So we, we put a, a mask on it just to remind everybody wear a mask. <laughs> yeah, very good, very good. I like it. <laughs> he did an excellent job. So uh, yeah, we're we're um, we've got things in the pipeline. You know, Christmas coming up and. You know, then we're working, we're beavering away at some little projects for that as well. But so for the pumpkins, just just to be, just so that people do know, you can just pop by. I think you open in the afternoon, and then if there's a pumpkin there, you you just pick one up and and it's available for everyone in the area. Yeah, and, free free yeah, for yeah. everybody in the college in Northland others. Anybody wants to pop in at the centre? Um, but it's it not covered. No, that's the thing. It's a competition. You've got to carve your own pumpkin. Okay. Uh, you could win a prize. So. Okay, okay. Just wanted to, just <laughs> wanted to highlight mask, that. You can make a spooky mask and, and win a prize too. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, I want to remind that because it's quite important. So why is this happening? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and these are the things that keep us going, you know, amid us all the, all the sort of, you know, the, the kind of stuff that brings you down you know we, we have we, we have a lot of fun you know and we, we laugh a lot and you know we still know how to enjoy life even though things are quite grim at times <laughs> yeah it can be ah. just changing the way you know what we were going through things but realizing you know we can still be happy and have a lot of good stuff at the same time yeah. I feel for my colleagues, every Friday I do, I do terrible puns. It's my way to, to work things out. So they have a very bad time, but I feel better. So. <laughs> yeah, I oh, like, yeah. yeah, that's it. If that helps. You know. <laughs> Friday's fun day. Uh, but yeah, we need to do things that are positive. So that, that's definitely Absolutely. something. So, yeah. Oh. But more seriously, it's. Uh, it's something that uh, at the moment, uh, like a part, part of his podcast and uh, it is we do, we're trying to understand how we can help each other and things. So the, what, what do you think uh, would really, I understand the build site is a, is a big problem because you need the space, but yeah. is there anything that, that would really, you mentioned volunteers, is there, is there anything that really would help you at the center and the work that you're doing and, and the groups that we mentioned that, that you- Yes, you absolutely. Talk? Yeah, I mean, certainly um, volunteer drivers is always a good thing if, if anybody wants to, you know, is in the, in the area and they're able to help out with that. You know, we appreciate that people have lives and they can't volunteer 24-7, but, you know, mm -hmm. if you a couple of hours, that would be great. Any donations of canned goods, toiletries, um, you know, any local businesses that like to support us, with um you know things that we can help out for families during holiday times mm -hmm. we'd really greatly appreciate that you know and i must say that i have to say that we have had so much support from our community and local businesses it's been amazing you know um whatever we put out it comes right back at us with the support and the encouragement that we get from people mm -hmm. you know um we we have um received quite a lot of recognition for our for our work and uh it's gone right out of my head actually sorry <laughs> um you know we we did win the, the special achievement award for youth first um for our services during covid19 the digital youth club and uh, we're in the final for Kingdom FM's um, local hero awards. Wow, very great. The best community group. So we're excited to hear the outcome of that. And we got some money from the Deputy Chief Constable's Community Fund Award. 
uh, for those who serve and contribute to the community. So, you know, we're getting, you know, th these things just keep us going, you know, they keep us wanting to do what we do. And we're so, so grateful for anybody that's just good for us or, you know, just spread the word about what we do. We're really happy about that and makes it all worthwhile. The Kingdom Hero, that's next week, isn't it? So I think. I believe so, yes. Yeah, I think so. Ah, okay, right. So by the time the podcast comes out, I think the next first day, so it will be now. So we never know. So we'll oh, do well. Good fingers stuff. crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so, really good to hear. So uh, we, we definitely, as, as we post, we, we make a call out and say if you want to volunteer and. and yes. Uh, for, and, North uh, Glenroth is here, yeah, I encourage you. Dean and North Glenroth is. And if you want to be a community champion, there's opportunities. <laughs> Can you explain a bit more what, uh, how yes. community champions, uh, do they link with a specific uh, equality group? Does it's an area? How, how does it work? They're just, they're just people that are actually the champions of any local community at the moment. So just people who are looking out for their neighbours quite friendly and approachable and can talk to their, you know, they can talk to people and, you know, maybe identify people that are struggling a bit and okay. encourage them to come forward so that we can, we can assist them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they can also distribute the community food that we get from the larder, um, yes. nappies, toiletries, things like that, things mm -hmm. that people really need, but they're maybe not able to actually access center physically you know okay. Yeah. okay so if i want someone wanted to apply they can just contact you or check on the website yes uh -huh. yeah just get in touch um our, our phone number's on the facebook page and they can contact us by phone mm -hmm. by email info at colleague and community center uh yep so and, and any donations that you want you know, can people, is there a time that they should be dropping off at? Um, we are, we do try to be open sort of nine to five, Monday to Friday, obviously at the moment. It's a, it's about, it's about we're in a building site at the moment. Um, but um, if, um, if anybody wants to donate anything, just get in touch with us, email us. The the addresses are all on our Facebook page. Um uh, phone us. We're you know we're we're open to anything really. So yeah. <laughs> I, I mean I mean in note there, the, the best way to check for your online is on your Facebook. That's definitely that, uh, that's right, I, yeah. I, I share that everywhere. Well. I mean physically there we can't take a lot of actual things at the moment because we don't physically have the room for, you know, like we would like to do things like provide clothing for, you know, like take clothing for, to help people, mm -hmm. you know, assist with the winter coats and things like that. But we can't do it because we just don't have the room. We can't, due to the COVID restrictions, we can't take things in from household equipment, things like that. But, you know, cash donations, and goods that you know we can get out in emergency food parcels, toiletries, that kind of thing. We're we're always looking for that, and we're really grateful for anything like that. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. I, yeah. I will make sure to include in the post. Typing away. <laughs> <laughs> so you, 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 your group just seems to been able. It, it, you sound like you've been able to adapt to the best that you do in this period and being able to help people that are dealing with poverty in whatever type of group that they're in, you know, may it be children or vulnerable people or anybody within that kind of situation. So I've lost my train of thought all of a sudden. So <laughs> sorry about that. It's all right. <laughs> oh my God, I just went blank there. Uh, no worries. I think uh, we're not a problem. I, I thought you were talk a bit about uh, how how can people get, get in touch. So uh, yeah. a lot of what we, we, we do, obviously, we, we're interested in people that have um, 
people that can't communicate easily it might be different language or they, they might be bsl users or a, yes. a, a difficulty so, so they might have barriers into actually accessing the services that are there usually so is there anything that uh, you have in place for them or is it through your uh, um, your, your, yeah. your champions so <laughs> yes uh, i mean certainly through our community champions um as i say that that's something that we're in the process of developing um, certainly with in mind to, you know, people from different ethnic backgrounds and um, people with, um, you know, hearing issues and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I just might say um, that we actually have a supply of hearing aid batteries at the centre as well. <laughs> so another thing. Um, but, you know, we are always looking for ways to develop things and, and adapt to, to meet the needs of, of our service users. Um, so community champions would probably be a good way, you know, they can be identified with Yellow Hive as best with Collidine Community Centre on the back. They'll be roaming around Collidine and North Lynn with this. Okay. Um, you know, usually would, if it's anybody that was having difficulty, they'd be referred through one of our partner agencies. We work a lot with, you know, British Red Cross, um, Fife Women's Aid, who have had a huge increase in, you know, referrals and cases. Percent, I think it was since the start of lockdown, and you know, we've been working a lot with them. So, um, you know, any any other agency, you know, yourselves, Fife Migrant Forum, anybody that can refer, we're, we're you know, we're happy to assist in any way we can. Obviously, we need to look at different ways of delivering our services, but that is a work in progress at the moment. Everyone's learning that at the moment, the Lord. Yeah. Definitely there. But, so there are many ways that people can access. So we can try connect directly or through another a partner agent that can actually yeah. give them a yeah. referral. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Okay, so I'll add that. And now, so what we tend to do is, um, is there anything, I know the pumpkin says it's very important at the moment, is there anything that's happening at the moment that uh, you go like, right, okay, we really need to talk about this. So this will be out next week-ish. <laughs> so is there anything that you'd like, uh, um, events coming up and things you'd like to advertise about? So I think your, uh, the contest goes on till the 29th. That's right, yes. Yeah. So that, that's going on till next week. So pumpkins and um, spooky masks. This one was made by another <laughs> one of our volunteers. So, you know, just encouraging the children to get creative and, you know, do that. Um, as I said, we, last year at Christmas, we had a sit-down meal for 30 people. We, we did 30 hot dinners, we did hampers, and we delivered some hot meals out into the community to people that couldn't access the centre on Christmas Day, which was fantastic. Uh, personally, it was it was great for me because I got out of my Christmas dinner. It was quite pleased. Oh. <laughs> um, so it was really good. Um, this year, we're obviously, uh, we don't know how we how we we're going to stand with that. We don't know how that's going to work. So we are probably going to be um, thinking of ways to deliver deliver out to people, you know. So again, you know, any drivers that are available then. All right, okay. You know, that that would be good. But, yeah. but we have some, you know, Santa related things in the pipeline that we don't really want to discuss at the moment. So oh, watch, wow. watch the space, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like We're in negotiations with Santa at the moment, so you know. So, <laughs> you the page. I like the hook. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very, good. very good. No, that's really important. We'll definitely put a call out for that. That sounds good. It sounds oh, yeah. like you, you need people that will actually give a, a few hours of your time here and there to actually. Help you read. Absolutely. That's really important, and yeah, that's definitely something that we're gonna include in the post. Definitely. But again, I would like to say that our existing volunteers are incredible, amazing, wonderful people. You know, and it's very difficult, you know, for a lot of people, and they have just allowed us to deliver 
the service that we have been able to do, do you know? Mm -hmm. All these activities, you know, we couldn't have done it without them. Not at all. They, they need the award themselves before they burn out because there's a lot. But, yeah. uh, I mean, is it, what, six, seven, eight? Yeah, so it's it's, it's a long time now that uh, a lot of people got involved uh, since uh, the start. Uh, and then I think uh, a lot of people started to feel a bit flat when they heard, it's like, gosh, this is going to be through winter as well. A lot of people were hoping to be right. by then. So, yeah. yeah. I know. A, a big shout out to the volunteers that are hanging out there. That's, that's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, it's like we don't know how long this is going to go on for. Um, and we don't want to, we want to keep upbeat and positive. You know, we want to try and, um, you know, put out positive messages and help, you know, help just keep the word out that we're here, we're still here, you know, <laughs> we're, and we're going to be here for as long as we can to do what we can. So, definite. Well, we'll point people to your Facebook page, definitely. <laughs> Whilst the building is being built. I think. Yes. <laughs> and, and hopefully, but, but hopefully it will be it will be done as quick as possible. Fingers crossed for you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds brilliant. Oh, well, it's been nice to talk to you this afternoon, Cardan. Oh, and you, and you. It's and been everything, wonderful. you know, and um, like Eric says, hope the building gets finished soon, but yeah, so for you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get all that space back and have a bit of more, like, freedom to do other stuff kind of things. Yeah. Um, and thanks for the opportunity to put the word out um, for this on behalf of the centre. We're really grateful. It's it's amazing what, what you've been doing with the different organisations, and you know I've really appreciated um, you know all the information that's come from you guys and all the hard work that you're doing. So to your staff as well, thank you. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure. We're thank you, Adam. That means a lot. We we're just curious. We need to, we want to find out and and just chat really, but. That's really great. Thank yeah, you. we just want to talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to our colleagues and uh, uh, make sure to give them a nudge for your um, local hero and, and check. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Uh, it's good to I recognize what, what's going on. It's mega important. So nice stuff. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks very much. No problem. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> Take care. All the best you too. Bye. Yeah. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.